Hello, I'm Panos Kodzathanasis, and this is ASEAN Movie Pulse Interviews. Today I'm here with uh, Sarah Mohammed of Manga Productions. Hello, how are you, Sarah? Hello, how are you doing? I'm fine, I'm fine. Thank you for being here. So tell us a bit about uh, Manga Productions. How did they came to be and what are their main focuses? Great. Uh, so Manga Production was uh, it's a Saudi company. Uh, that is established to inspire the heroes of tomorrow through the production of animation, video games, and comics. And we aim to uh, build and develop a high quality creative content industry in Saudi Arabia and in the region. We're also working on supporting talents uh, in the field of comics, animation, and video games in you know, different aspects such as storytelling, art, uh, design, animation, even music composition and voice acting. And we have partnered so far with a lot of uh, international and local entities, uh, such as very big industry giants like Toy Animation, uh, SNK, Square Enix, uh, Kadokawa, Telltale, and many more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And uh, tell me a bit about the name. Or is there some significance between having a name like manga? Uh, so we were inspired mostly, a lot of Saudis were uh, very avid watchers of uh, animation. And I would say that uh, we watched animation ever since like the 70s and the 80s, uh, especially Japanese anime. Mm -hmm. And it has really inspired us. And we hope also in manga production that we do create works that inspire the global audience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, tell me a bit about how did the cooperation with this big Japanese company started? You said Toei, Square, how did that came to be? Right, so specifically with uh, Toy Animation, the collaboration started back in 2017. So we had an internship program uh, for the Saudi talents to travel to Japan and work side by side with the Japanese experts in the animation. And uh, we had also a lot of training programs with partners such as uh, Square Enix, uh, where we also had Saudi talents working with the experts there. So with Toy, we had multiple productions. Uh, we started with a, a short uh, 23 minute episode called The Woodcutter's Treasure. It spanned into a 13 episode TV series later on called The Future Folk Tales. Also, we worked together with The Journey. And uh, I just gotta say that it's it's been a very great you know, and fruitful relationship uh, not only in like the knowledge exchange uh, aspect, but also from the you know human and just the cultural exchange that we had. Um, I think that was a very inspiring cooperation. Mm -hmm. Since you mentioned this cultural exchange, was it easy cooperating with the Japanese? I think the mentality is very different, I guess, sometimes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very, very different. Um, like when we were working on the journey, uh, there's a very big difference, not only in the language and the culture, but also in the generation. So the Saudi team is much younger, about the average age is like 20 to 35, while the Japanese team is more experienced and older. So the differences between the languages, the culture, even our techniques, like in art and animation are different. But honestly, all of this, because we worked together and we had a common goal on a human level, we could communicate very well. So the result was a very great cult cross-cultural production. I would say that we merged the Arabian culture with the Japanese animation style that we love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, what are the biggest benefits and the biggest issues of having an animation company in Saudi? I'm not sure how developed the industry is. Mm. Uh, mm. Now, speaking of the benefits, one of them is definitely supporting the talent and providing them with job opportunities. Uh, because in Saudi, there's a lot of amazing talents in the field of animation. And a lot of them grew up watching anime, got inspired by it. And they just need the suitable support, you know, to uh, grow further, to find opportunities to work as professionals. Another benefit I would say is that we have a lot of content, like creative content that we would love to share through animation. Like the Saudi culture is very rich with stories, with history, fantasy, so many things that we feel animation is a great medium, you know, to share those uh, visions and stories with the world in a unique way. And also like in terms of the demand on this, uh, Saudi is, I think, one of the countries that consume anime a lot in the region. So we have over 
35% of the Saudi population who are youth. And they watch the anime trends very closely. They consume a lot of animation. They go to local conventions, global conventions, cosplay. You know, they're fully immersed in the culture. So they are also very eager to watch local animation and to support it. And I'm very thankful that we also have a very passionate support from our leadership for animation and entertainment fields. So I think we have a very good opportunity of establishing a thriving animation industry and ecosystem in Saudi. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And since you mentioned the journey, can you tell us a bit about the production? How did that came to be? Right. So the production of the journey is a collaboration between manga production and toy animation. And this collaboration was literally on every level. So in manga production, we had artists, writers, uh, producers in our offices in Riyadh and in Tokyo, working very closely with the Japanese experts from Toy, starting from the script. Uh, the original idea was from manga production uh, to the character and background design, layout, animation, music. Basically everything was a collaboration. And our role in manga production, because of the nature of the movie, we wanted to make sure that it, the Arabian heritage was authentically portrayed, not only in the visuals and the music, but also in the motion. So for example, the body language of the characters, we wanted to make sure you know that really looks authentically Arabian. So uh, in order to do that, there's a lot of, uh, as I mentioned before, cultural exchange. And we also had like a, a location hunting trip to the toy team they went to the actual locations where the battle that is shown in the journey has happened. So they've seen the Saudi culture firsthand, the environment, uh, the food. They also met with the people, most importantly. And uh, I think that impacted the production very positively. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And can you tell me a bit about the dubbing? How did that work? Yes. So currently, the journey movie is available in five languages. Arabic, uh, Japanese, German, and Chinese, and English. And on basically the dubbing, I think that uh, the most important, I would say, like aspect of the dubbing that we had to make sure of as manga production is that we are supporting the young talents. So in the Arabian dubbing, we took the young talents that are just starting in the field and paired them with more experienced talents and gave them like the lead roles and with a lot of training uh, in the movie, basically with the, the sound directors. And uh, that part actually has happened during COVID. So it was a bit challenging mm -hmm. because everyone was kind of recording from their home, you know, with the lockdown and all that. But uh, we're so glad that the result was very well received from the audience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you walk us a bit through how was the casting more or less? So in order for us to basically, there's a lot of talents that we had. So in order for us to choose like the right talent for the right character, it wasn't only a matter of, you know, whose voice um, tone would only match the character, but for us, there was a lot of emotions. So if you watch the movie, there are a lot of different emotions that the characters are exhibiting. So we had a lot of casting to make sure that the uh, person who's casting is able to deliver those emotions as well, not only have like a beautiful voice or a suitable voice for this character. So when we casted a lot of the young talents and paired them with more experienced talents, we also had uh, a dubbing uh, basically competition. And the mm -hmm. winners of that competition for the dubbing were actually have taken roles in the journey. So that also is, you know, one of our plans to empower the youth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And people in Saudi Arabia, when they watch anime, they watch dubbed or subtitled usually? Uh, so they usually watch it as dubbed in Japanese, the original, and using the subtitles, either Arabic or English, mm -hmm, whatever is available. Okay, okay. And can you tell us a bit how was the reception of the journey around the world? It's screened in festivals, I saw, yeah. Yeah, so uh, thankfully the reception was very positive, whether it's in Saudi, the Middle East, Japan, or just globally. Uh, so we screened first in Saudi. It was the very first Saudi movie to screen with the 4DX technology. And uh, we received many great feedback, either through the journalists or through the social media. Actually, one of the journalists in Japan, who's a very well-known uh, journalist, has said that the journey changed the stereotype that we had of Saudi Arabia. 
So this really made us feel happy. Also, we got a great rating on IMDb after we released, which was a lot, a lot better, I would say, than uh, in comparison to a lot of international films that have been uh, shown at the same time. Also in June of this year, we received an award of the best experimental movie. Uh, it's uh, an award from the Septimius Film Festival in Netherlands, which was given for the excellence in creating a unique and expressive experience. This is the first Saudi and Arabian movie to earn such an award in an international festival. Uh, we also had a great uh, premiere in the US in the historical Chinese theater in Hollywood, the very first Saudi and Arabian movie to be screened there. So overall, I think it was great. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Saudi Arabia, has the film screened in the country? Yes. So it did screen first in Saudi and uh, the reception was really amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And um, tell me, uh, the movie includes uh, different techniques. You have a lot of moving animation, but some of the flashbacks in the material are presented with minimal movement. Can you tell me a bit about this approach? That's true. Uh, so basically, the parts where, as you mentioned, there are minimal movements, uh, basically those were for the shorter stories appearing in the movie. So those stories actually uh, historically has happened, but they have happened in different eras, each one of them different era, different civilization, a different environment even. So we had an idea of utilizing that creatively to explore different art styles for each to make sure it's like memorable for the audience, it feels unique. And due to the nature of the narrative of those stories and their art styles, uh, in the art direction, we treated each scene as like uh, an illustration. So we focus on the visual aesthetic and the emotional atmosphere rather than the faster paced animation, which is in the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, why did you choose the particular story based there? Right, so the Arabian Peninsula in general, I would say is very rich with history, culture and fascinating folk tales. So the journey uh, as a historical fantasy is one of those tales that is derived from one of those tales that happened in the region. And the core of the journey as a story is about heroism. It's about believing, about never giving up and protecting your loved ones. So for us, we thought those messages would resonate with the global audience on a human level and would inspire them, which is, you know, our mission in manga production. So we thought it's, it's a great story to share with the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And uh, can you tell me a bit about uh, what are your future projects? What are you working on now? Okay, so we are currently working on multiple projects for animation. And one of them is the second season of our series, which is called the Future Folk Tales. And it's about the daily life of a Saudi family living in the future in the city of Niam, a futuristic city. And whenever they face an obstacle, their grandmother tells them a tale that is related to the Arabian folk tales uh, from the past, so they can learn from that. It's a very challenging animation project, I would say, because each episode has a different folk tale, with a different art style from a different region in Saudi. But it gives a great exposure of the diversity of the Saudi culture. We're very excited for it. We also have a manga, uh, which is called Oja Project. It's a comic or a manga about the Saudi history. So this is the very first time that Saudi history is illustrated through art. And I'm very excited to share more about that as we progress further. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, do you think that, okay, this combination of having, let's say, Japanese uh, art form with uh, Arabic uh, storytelling, do you think it's something that you're going to pursue in the future, going this way? Of course. And basically, the Japanese uh, animation style is very unique and beautiful. At the same time, what we're doing is there's a lot of knowledge transfer between us and the Japanese experts because what we hope to achieve is to create basically a Saudi animation industry uh, that is unique, uh, that is influenced definitely by the animation industry in Japan that has been established for over 60 years, but also respects like the culture of Saudi Arabia and represents that and also empowers the youth. Mm -hmm. So that is something that we are definitely working on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And I guess I have one last question I wanted to ask before, but I kind of forgot. How much does the film cost, if you can say? Because I know animation is pretty expensive compared to like live action movies. So mm. can you share that or? I'm not sure I can share that, but I would say that it's not as much as a lot of animation movies, mm -hmm. if I were to say. Mm -hmm. So at the stage that the company is in, uh, does it uh, make financial, uh, is it like, do you break even? Is it financial healthy to have this kind of company in Saudi Arabia right now? Or are you planning to you know, for the future, let's say? Uh, sorry? Yeah. I mean, at the moment, would you say that the uh, company is financially secure, let's say? Does it have profit or is it something that you plan for the future to have, let's say? And now you're okay. just developing. Right. So mm -hmm. speaking of the Saudi animation industry in general, I would say it's relatively young. So mm -hmm. it is just starting, and it, but it is expanding very quickly. It is, you know, progressing rapidly with in tandem with the Vision 2030 for Saudi uh, to support the entertainment sector, including animation. So we are working more and more to make sure that, you know, there is a very clear ecosystem either from, I'm not only talking about the creative uh, field, but I'm also talking about things like uh, legal field, the uh, financial management, human resources, and so on. So basically to have a full ecosystem. So that is something definitely we're working on. But we're aware it takes time. It took Japan over 60 years, you know, to become a mature market. But I feel like it will not take Saudi long to reach that level, hopefully, with all the efforts that are being put into this. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Great. Thank you so much. OK, this was ASEAN Movie Pulse interviews. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye.